Kyoto, Japan's majestic city of ancient temples and serene gardens, offers superb cultural treasures and a variety of sensual delights. Your most enjoyable activity will probably be strolling through the artistically designed garden landscapes with their winding paths, tranquil ponds, stately trees, lush vegetation, and traditional wooden temples. So wear comfortable shoes and be prepared to do a lot of walking. We're going to take you on some wonderful strolls through the gardens, around the temples, and into downtown and show you the highlights of this magnificent city. Kyoto's modern downtown is also fascinating, filled with shops, restaurants, historic structures, the occasional geisha, and plentiful people watching. These sublime gardens unfold as you walk along paths that lead through changing vistas around each bend, where you can stop frequently to absorb each new perspective looking left, right, up, and down. These different views are enhanced by small statues and footbridges, bamboo railings, temple backdrops, and glimpses of distant mountains, all exquisitely arranged to be appreciated in moments of reflection. Kyoto was ranked as the number one visitor destination in the world by the readers of Travel and Leisure magazine for two years in a row in 2014 and 2015. Quite an honor. Maybe you haven't previously thought much about Buddhist temples or Shinto shrines and perhaps never had them on a priority list of must-see places, but visiting this city is different and we'll show you the harmony and the splendid beauty of those temple sites. It's all about the harmony of the gardens and their relationship to the venerable wooden structures which meld into a delightful experience. Nature lovers will gain high value from the effort and those with a spiritual bent can get that much more out of the visit. Kyoto has got 17 places listed as UNESCO World Heritage Sites which is an extremely large number for that ranking. And there's another seven major historical sites designated by the local government, and much more to see for those with abundant time, including museums, palaces, stone monuments, traditional neighborhoods, and the modern downtown, theaters, and day trips to nearby cities such as Nara. Time can also be spent admiring the pottery, fabrics, tea ceremonies, flower arrangements, dance, cuisine, and calligraphy, all of which are highly developed here. You should try and spend at least two days in Kyoto so that you can visit the major attractions and experience the essence of this special city. Or you could easily stay more, stay a week, and never run out of worthwhile attractions in this former imperial capital, which has a staggering 2,000 temples and shrines. You'll never run out of places to see. Kyoto is surrounded on all sides by numerous temples, shrines, and gardens, and they're located within a few miles of the town center. A reasonable two-day strategy for dealing with the array is focus attention in one direction. In our case, we looked at Kyoto's east side, Higashiyama, which has a very high concentration of sites nestled on the edge of the lovely hilly topography. In the other directions, Kyoto is relatively flat, but the gardens always have some interesting landscape design to create a pleasant contoured ground surface and delightful curved paths to lead you through it. Many of these temple sites on the east side are in walking distance of each other, reaching about four miles from south to the north end of the cluster in Higashiyama. So you can walk between some of these sites, as we'll be pointing out in the series. However, when you add up the amount of walking within each site and time spent shopping along the approach lanes, the combined distance is going to reach well over 10 miles. So you'll sometimes want to use buses, the subway, and taxis. A two-day pass for bus and subway can be purchased, but if time is an issue, you will find taxis are a big help now and then. And the taxi drivers are very courteous with their white gloves and honesty, 
even if they don't speak any English, and this gives you a chance to sit down and rest while you're being transported between sites. More than 50 million visitors come to Kyoto each year. Most of them are just staying for the day and then moving on. But about one million of them annually do spend the night in a local hotel. There's lots of accommodations of all price ranges. And most of the visitors are Asian. No doubt with the growth of Chinese travel, these numbers are going to continue increasing. These crowds of visitors could very much interfere with your appreciation of Kyoto's heavenly gardens. So try and visit during the less busy late fall or early spring in order to properly experience the tranquil garden atmosphere. Temperatures will be nippy then, many trees will lack leaves and garden colors are more subdued, but the absence of crowds makes those trade-offs very much worthwhile. Especially in early December, when we were photographing these visuals, the fall colors still linger and yet the crowds are not around, making a perfect combination. And late March is similar. It offers fresh air scented by spring flowers before that stampede of cherry blossom viewers arrives. Crowds don't matter so much for normal city attractions like a park or street scenes, you know, downtown streets, the amusement arcade and shops and museums. But the temple gardens here are those precious jewels that you should really try to view in quiet times during that off season. The fragile beauty of the gardens can send you to another dimension if the ambience is right. But communication with nature is pretty difficult when there are four busloads of tourists right in front of you in the picture. Gazing upon a Zen pebble garden alone or with a few others is a completely different experience than jostling in a crowd for a wedge of the best view, everybody trying to take a picture in front of you. However, even if you cannot visit during those ideal small windows in time, Kyoto is a four season destination that can be appreciated throughout the year. If you don't mind crowds, consider the peak seasons of cherry blossom viewing in April and colorful foliage reaching its peak during November, or arrange your itinerary to connect with one of the major festivals. But try to avoid the national holiday periods when it is really jam-packed. Minimize interference by visiting major sites early or late in the day. This is part of our series on the temples and gardens of eastern Kyoto, the Higashiyama district, and also we'll take you downtown in some of our other videos. Be sure to look for them on our YouTube channel.